to paint. And this one is one of my favorites. When you look at it, what do you see? A mother and daughter, sisters, strangers? The woman in the painting is me as an adult, holding on to my childhood sense of wonder as I wander in the dark, navigating life and research. As a child, I was inspired to look up at the stars by fictional heroes like Star Trek's Captain Catherine Janeway and real life heroes like NASA's first female shuttle commander, Eileen Collins. As an adult, when I look up at the sky, I imagine the thousands of man-made objects in orbit. I'm using the natural and the artificial stars as inspiration and guidance in my research as I wander in the dark, only able to see as far as the lantern will illuminate. I'm drawing on this inspiration in my research as I teach AI to safely and autonomously navigate spacecraft. Launch costs have decreased dramatically. Space business is booming, and space is getting crowded. Every dot in this figure is an object larger than a cell phone. As the number of objects in space is increasing exponentially, so are the ideas for how to deal with it. Soon, we'll see spacecraft being built in space rather than sent up complete. We'll see orbiting gas stations and mechanic shops that are going up to refuel and repair satellites. We'll also see trash, to trash and tow truck satellites that are going up to remove dead satellites and debris. To enable all of this, we have a huge space traffic management problem that the international community needs to work together to solve. But space isn't just about Earth orbit. We're also going out to the moon and Mars, where there are large delays in communication. Communicating back and forth between the moon and Earth only takes about two and a half seconds. But it can take anywhere from five to 20 minutes for a signal to go one way between the Earth and Mars. By the time we know that something bad happened on a Mars mission, it might be too late to send up instructions to fix it. So between this complex space traffic management problem and the communicating at vast distances problem, we are soon approaching a point where it's going to be impossible for a, a manned pilot or a space forest guardian in a mission control room to control spacecraft 100% of the time. Could the autonomous capability of AI help? Well, AI is brittle. We see this every day when we interact with devices. Your home assistant doesn't understand what you said, your vacuuming robot gets itself stuck in the bathroom again, and your learning thermostat freezes you out while it learns how to balance saving energy and meeting your temperature preferences. When these things happen, it's not a big deal. Annoying, but not life-threatening. You can repeat what you're going to say to your home assistant. You can rescue your vacuuming robot and know that it will probably get to your living room tomorrow. And you can override your thermostat with manual settings to stay warm. It's an entirely different matter when we talk about letting AI control a spacecraft in orbit. Spacecraft are responsible for critical functions for our everyday lives, from the GPS on your phone giving you directions, to getting data to meteorologists to make weather predictions, to even authorizing a credit card transaction. A mistake by an AI on a spacecraft could result in the loss of billions of dollars of economic value, priceless space-based data and resources, and for the military, the lives of soldiers on the ground who depend on satellites for communication and imagery. In a worst case scenario, one spacecraft could collide with another spacecraft, creating debris that then goes and collides with other spacecraft, cascading with more collisions with other spacecraft, resulting in a condition known as Kessler syndrome. If we're going to put AI in space, we have to ensure that that AI is safe. My team at the Air Force Research Lab is building AI in the form of artificial neural networks, which mimic the way that neurons in the human brain fire to communicate and make sense of complex information. We call these artificial brains an AI agent. 
And then we put these AI agents into a satellite driving simulator that we turned into a video game by adding our own custom scoring system. To teach them, we're using a method called reinforcement learning, which is kind of like training your dog with positive and negative reinforcement. The AI doesn't get peanut butter treats, though, when it does something right. We tell it what it likes by giving it a positive score for things we want it to do and a negative score for things that we don't want it to do. So consider training a spacecraft to dock. We might give it points as it gets closer into the docking point and a huge reward at the end for successfully docking, while at the same time making it lose points for taking too long or using too much fuel. At first, the agent does a bunch of random things. Imagine handing a video game controller to a child and they just start pushing all the buttons and randomly moving the joystick. This is essentially what the AI is doing until all of a sudden it gets a point. And it realizes, hey, when I do this, I get a point. So it remembers that in this trial and error approach as it's trying thousands or millions of times to do the dock. And it exploits that knowledge by trying similar things, while at the same time exploring other possible actions to see if there's more ways to get points. The ultimate goal over many, many simulations is to get the highest score possible in the game. And it does this by finding the optimal action to take for any possible observation that it has of the simulation. One of the biggest challenges that we have is that AI is still a little bit more of an art than a science today. So the first thing that we have to do is simplify. Rather than having a complex model of the spacecraft with a lot of very detailed uh, descriptions, like the figure on the left, we make a lot of simplifying assumptions to end up with more of a rough outline and approximation of what the satellite would be, like the, the woman in the figure on the right. By doing this, we can test out all of our theories on simple models and build up a theory of the best way to do it before we apply it to more complex models. Next, we have to add safety. One way to do this is to penalize the agent for making unsafe decisions. However, penalizing the agent doesn't always guarantee that it's going to make a safe choice. It also can have some unintended consequences. For instance, if we gave the agent a huge penalty for a collision during the satellite docking process, it may never learn to dock because it associates getting close to the docking point with a large penalty. The difference between docking and crashing is velocity. It's a fine line. So if penalizing it during the training process isn't enough, what can we do? My team is building up a safe training approach for satellite autonomy. Think of it like driver's ed for space AI. In driver's ed, the instructor has a brake on her side. The instructor monitors the student, and if at any point in time they're going to do something dangerous, they can intervene by hitting their brake at the last minute to avoid a collision. In this analogy, we're trying to train AI in the role of a student, and we're building emergency safety systems in the role of an instructor. Most driver's ed instructors are pretty laid back, which is good because how could a student learn if the instructor was constantly hitting on the brake? We're harnessing that relaxed posture of a driver's ed instructor in building our safety systems because we want the AI to be able to explore as much of the possible options that it can take while still preventing it from making unsafe choices and learning unsafe behavior. When a teenager is learning to drive, they have to prove their trustworthiness to society and perhaps more importantly to their parents or guardians that have the ability to give them the keys to the car. They do this by demonstrating their capabilities in the real world under supervision. In this analogy, spacecraft operators are like the parents that are monitoring the AI. Just like parents, 
they're understandably hesitant to hand over the keys because the consequences of the student making a mistake are so high that it could result in the loss of this one-of-a-kind exquisite space asset. So instead what we're doing is we're having the AI provide courses of action to the operators to select from. Then over time, when the AI has consistently shown that it's able to do the job safely, it can earn its learner's permit and be able to take some actions on its own. When humans learn to drive, one of the hardest parts is learning how to drive in rare events and off nominal conditions, like snow, ice, and heavy traffic. Similarly, a spacecraft needs to know how to operate safely around other spacecraft, as well as in the presence of faults. Spacecraft need to know what to do in an emergency. Once we've proven that it's possible to train an AI to command a spacecraft, we can ask other important, more philosophical questions, like when to trust it. Safety is freedom from harm, and trust is a willingness to accept vulnerability. When a spacecraft operator trusts an AI to be in command of their spacecraft, they're vulnerable to the possibility that the spacecraft uh, that the, When an operator trusts an AI to be in command of the spacecraft, they're vulnerable to the possibility that the AI makes a bad decision and damages an exquisite one-of-a-kind satellite. Imagine a Space Force guardian in mission control with a checklist. The AI is telling her one thing, but her gut is telling her something else. Is there something that the AI sees that the operator isn't aware of? Is there something that the operator knows, some context that they have that the AI doesn't have? When does the operator trust the AI? And when does the AI trust the operator? If the operators never trust AI or don't trust it enough, it could limit the number of spacecraft in orbit or how quickly they can respond to threats. On the flip side, We've actually found that in a lot of cases, humans overtrust AI and robotics. There was a study a few years ago that looked at participants in a simulated emergency, and they would follow the robots in dead ends and in circles, despite a number of clearly marked emergency exit signs. So maybe that scene in the office where Michael yells, the machine knows where it's going, as he follows his GPS straight into the lake, wasn't that far off. Mitigating brittle AI by building safety systems and appropriate teaming with human operators is ex an extremely difficult challenge. However, it's worth the time and effort because a spacecraft that can reliably and safely navigate space on its own will help to make the lantern brighter for exploration. Together, Humans and AI can explore further than we could on our own. Thank you.